Sup guys, Dino Fries here. And there are two things in this life that I love the most. Music and animals. <laughs> That's why I played Cassette Beast, an indie, turn-based, pixelated, open world, 2.5D monster catching, taming, collecting RPG. In simpler terms, and please don't crucify me for this, it's a Pokemon like. And yet it's so, so much more than just a clone of this franchise that we all either love or hate, but we all know it. Also quick and major shout out to Bitten Studio, the team that developed this game. They sent me a key for Cassette Beast to review it before the official launch on PC back in April. But I'm so late with this video now that it's already out on Nintendo Switch and Xbox too. Also, before I go any further with this video, there will be zero spoilers, zero spoilers. Most of the footage I will show you is the first several hours of Cassette Beast and nothing will contain anything that will ruin the story for you. And last but not least, I played this game entirely on my Steam Deck, which it runs fantastic on. So you might recall that I tried the demo out for Cassette Beast a while back and I made a video regarding my thoughts. In case you haven't watched it, here's the gist. I liked it a lot and I was so flippin' excited for the official release. But after playing through and completing the game's main campaign after about 20 hours, what do I think? Let's find out. Picking back up right where I left off after the demo ended because it kept my save file. To start, allow me to give you a brief summary of the story in Cassepis. You're a human who is warped into a strange retro futuristic world called New Whirl, Whirl, where they capture and train creatures known as beasts, uh, which are stored in cassette tapes. Suddenly, you team up with a new friend and command your own team of monsters to take down these supernatural beings called Ark Angels. Why? Because they claim to hold the power to send you and everyone in New World back to your own respective worlds. That's the main story, but there's side quests too. There's actually a lot of side quests, uh, too many to list off, but the main two, in addition to this main story, is um, there's Ranger Captains and there's the Land Keepers Association. So you're tracking down and defeating Ranger Captains and then which is like gym leaders in Pokemon. And then there's a Land Keepers Association, which are like Team Rocket. And all of these three quest lines are different enough from each other to make it feel like you're on a new journey every time you progress through each. With the Archangels, you're delving into dungeons that have puzzles unique to the theme of that Archangel. And at the end, there's always an intense boss fight that is challenging um, and also like unique in its own way. As for the rangers, you're not entering a gym like in Pokemon, but rather discovering the captains in uh, the open world, this vast island that is New World, and they each offer a tough battle and also, for the most part, like stick to one type of beast uh, according to their aesthetic and personality. And lastly, the Landkeepers Association, it's pretty simple. I mean, you break into these evil organizations as warehouses and beat them up. Now the overarching story and plot of Cassette Beasts, it's good. It's not gonna leave you with goosebumps um, or anything, but it, it's good. It's decent enough to hold your attention, in my opinion. I mean, every time I entered a dungeon leading to the Archangel, I knew I was like itching to get through these puzzles and face the boss because I knew each boss fight would be exciting because the Archangels are absurdly stunning in their own like demonic ways and just though just that honestly would have been enough for me um but the ranger captains uh that quest line and defeating them because they're tough that was that was like the cherry on top for me but the land keeper association was meh it, it was fine the, the the ending of that quest line does have a sick boss fight um but that was just okay to me but overall i mean the story is Good, in my opinion, like these kinds of games don't really even need an amazing story. Just one that makes sense, like why am I here, you know, collecting these monsters and battling 
with them. I mean, most Pokemon games have a shit story anyways, and I didn't care about those and I still enjoyed them. Um, and I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't love the ending of Cassette Beast. Just want to point that out that it was a bit underwhelming, but it, the story was good enough for me to keep my attention and I think it works. Okay, let's talk graphics now. I'm not going to lie, the graphics in Cassette Beast threw me off at first. I was just being like, this looks adorable and what the fuck? Um, the chibi anime sprites and characters against the pixel Minecraft background, it grows on you. It's not my favorite looking game by far, um, but I do I do dig it. I mean, that being said though, like I love, love, love the designs of these beasts. There's 150 different kinds and they're all like unique in their own ways. Instead of like the usual animal plus like an element that most of these kinds of games do, Pokemon included, Cassette Beast is like Let's take an object and introduce like some sort of concept onto it. And even the names are are great. They're hilarious um, or sometimes they're cool. But what takes things to the next level in terms of graphics in cassette beats are the arc fucking angels. It's like when you watched Courage the Cowardly Dog when you were little. One moment Courage is chilling with Muriel and Eustace. The next moment the spirit of the Harvest Moon appears and you're sleeping with Wano that night. And I like the ambiance of Cassette Beast. The overworld looks nice, it looks polished, the caves look nice, everything looks nice. And like the levels of weird are like what truly stood out for me for this game. That's what stuck with me, you know, now like a couple of months after I beat the game is that weirdness. Like that's what I took for me. Cause it's not like, it's not often you're surprised by, by like these things that are so like Un unnerving yet spectacular in a game that looks like this. Okay, now let's talk sound. Um, the sound design in Cassette Beast, I would say it's low-key immaculate. I mean, the noises that the beasts make when entering battle, the sound of the rain and the thunder when it storms, no complaints there, but I actually do have a complaint when it comes to the music. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's fine. I like it, but the music, there's not enough tracks you hear the same tune pretty much every time you're in battle and pretty much every time you're in the overworld both are good um but it gets old like one is upbeat and fun the other is chill and quaint but it gets so i wish they had more variety and also there's two tracks that have vocals and i brought this up in my video with the demo that you hear a lot one is like a somber, it's called Wherever We Are Now, and the other is like more hype, it's called Same Old Story. And they play like as you would figure if, you know, things are like not too intense, you hear Wherever We Are Now, and then Same Old Story plays when things start to heat up like throughout the story. Um, and that's like, you, there are like a, I think there's like maybe one other track, maybe there's more, um, but these two are what play the most by far and both will get stuck in your head while playing cassette beats for better or for worse. I like both tracks and I like the non-vocal ones as well but again really wish there was more variety with the music in this game. And I hate to compare but that's one of the things that Pokemon was pretty much always on the spot with. I, I still listen to the OST of Pokemon like all the games pretty much to this day. It's part of my like sleep study playlist um and they're like because they're memorable tracks but i don't think i will be spinning anything from cassette beats anytime soon after finally getting that woman's voice which is lovely by the way um out of my head because it stayed in there for way too long okay enough of that bullshit sound story graphics let's talk about game play cassette beats is all about turn-based battles within an open world and like let's get that open world stuff out of the way really quick so we can spend a lot of time on the yummy combat system so new url is small in scope but surprisingly huge take a look at the map to get a sense of what i'm feeling it seems tiny but your character is too so the world actually feels big there's forests there's deserts there's swamps there's mountains there's caves and there's bodies of water to explore. Plenty of space, and you do so with the help of abilities. So 
uh, some of the cassette beasts, sorry, some of the beasts that you catch, um, they will unlock ways to travel that makes things quicker and open up the world further. There's dashing, there's flying, there's climbing, there's swimming, and there's magnetism. Um, there's also puzzles out in the overworld that you either use uh, your abilities to solve or you also just like pick up and like put down boxes to press switches and open up chests or new or, or new areas and things like that and this kind of exploration that the world that the game features is open world um it's it's not it, it i would say it's not a highlight of the game it works it's fine um it's not as exciting as like pokemon scarlet and violet i feel i i feel like that was more exciting to traverse the world but it's certainly more interesting than the older pokemon games i mean sometimes things can be finicky but it feels smooth for the most part i just want to point out though that like i would i don't know if the developers intended this but i would always like jump on like npcs heads and then jump off them to reach new heights and it felt like cheating but i did that all the time so i don't know if that was meant to be in the game Okay, here we are. You're probably hungry now for some meat and potatoes, am I right? Good, because here we are. The main event, combat, and everything that relates to combat, the most important part of games like this. So, there's beasts, and each beast has their own set of skills. They're called stickers, and some can also evolve the beasts. Um, some just, most of them just once, some can evolve twice, and also, Beasts fuse together to create hybrids, and then you share like both beasts' move pools. Both are accessible, plus you get an ultimate as long as you and your companion's relationship is uh, strengthened enough. And let's talk more about companions while we're at it. There's a handful of people and one non-person, which I won't spoil, that team up with you. You yourself transform into the beasts, as does your companions. Like, this ain't Pokemon, you know? You don't command your monsters, you become them. Each companion has his own set of stats, um, but I stuck with Meredith most of the time just because she's best girl. Um, and also you and your companions are the ones with the levels, like you level up and so does your companion, not the beasts. The beasts rank up through a star system, which is how they evolve and get more powerful, but it's like your, your level when you're in battle uh, it, 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 it's what your trainer is, what you are and your companion, not the beasts. Now, quick thing on the companion system. I liked it a lot, but there's this annoying thing that's in the game where when you switch out companions, they hold on to the cassette that you equip them with. So you have to go through this hassle of like swapping around cassettes because you're going to have probably at that point your main team that you're going to want to hold on to and every time you switch out a companion they they hold on to the cassette and you need certain companions to do certain parts of the game and that was super annoying i uh, just want to point that out because that was like really annoying okay back to the beasts now or the stickers let's talk about the stickers so the stickers are again your moves and honestly it is a flawless system except for one part which i'll mention soon when you capture a beast they come with stickers and these beasts can also earn stickers when ranking up. You can buy stickers. You come across stickers when you battle, through chests, through rewards. And you can also peel off stickers from the beasts and add it to your inventory. And I love this system. Like, compared to the moves in Pokemon, it's it's almost like every move is a TM in itself. And the moves, um, the skills, they're diverse enough for players to get really creative with their strategies with their team. Um, for example, like I just would like load up my team with a bunch of AP starters so they can go all out on turn one. And also my character Matt, that's me, he had a higher range attack stat, so I would use beasts with range moves with him, while Meredith had a higher melee attack stat, so I would use melee uh melee using my beast on her and that's the sticker system is complex but it's actually pretty easy to understand the only thing i didn't like which i i will bring up now is that sorting through stickers is a fucking nightmare they really should have put in some system where you could like sort easier like through type you only can sort through like alphabetical so either a z or 
ZA. I really wish they would do they would have let you sort through it because like rearranging stickers on my team was always super annoying. Okay, moving on. Let's let's get to the combat, all right? It's turn-based and it usually involves a 2v2, sometimes it's a 2v3, and and even rarer is a 3v3. Cassette beasts use an AP system for skill. So the more AP your beast has, the more powerful moves it can use. And you can cheat this in ways, like how I mentioned the AP stars before, you can regenerate AP, you can take away AP from the enemies. I like this system a lot more than the PP system in Pokemon. So when you're in battle, beasts act according to speed. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. There's also ranged defense, melee defense, HP, and again, in the ranged attack and the melee attack. I mentioned before, you got skills that inflict damage, others do buffs and debuffs, set up walls, yada, yada, yada. And if you want to catch a wild beast, it's called recording. Um, you use a tape and then you would hit that beast until it gives up and your, your percentage for catching goes higher and you eventually you catch it hopefully they don't die as long as you're recording them so you can drop their hp down to to zero and then record them um for like the best chances possible there's also shinies in this game like in pokemon but unlike pokemon they're called bootlegs and besides the different coloring they also have different types which is super cool this is just like another system that cassette beasts like i don't want to say took from Pokemon, um, but they just like took it to the next level. I, I found like two to three throwing my playthrough, I believe. Um, so they're rare, but they are possible to find. And it's of course like super hype when you find one. Okay, but what I love most about the combat in Cassette Beast is the elemental chemistry system. So you know how in Pokemon, it kind of feels like electric should be super effective against steel and the same for like ice against water well this game makes sense in that way so there's 14 types there's beast there's air there's astral there's earth there's fire there's ice there's lightning there's metal there's plant there's plastic there's poison there's water there's glass and there's glitter but if you use a fire attack on a water type steam gets released granting that water beast a buff and if you use a water attack on a fire type, that fire beast is extinguished, resulting in a debuff. It's so cool, this elemental chemistry system that they have in place. It's so much more interesting than Pokemon's just simple like, oh, super effective, oh, not very effective. Another example is using a lightning attack on a metal type. The metal beast becomes conductive, attracting future lightning attacks or using a fire move on a plastic type, melting the plastic beast and converted it into a poison type. And of course, an ice attack on a water type freezes the water beast. Playing around with this elemental, elemental chemistry system is so much fun. There's so many interactions and the game teaches you how matchups work after you like set one off. That's another thing I like about cassette bees. So there's a tutorial in the beginning that tells you how to battle and stuff, which is fine. It's it's, it's good. Um, but then there's these indicators that happen during battles that 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 aren't annoying at all and are just super helpful because there's a lot to the elemental chemistry system to learn and remember. And they'll like tell you what you just did and explain why. And you have to just kind of memorize it. Um, but a lot of the interactions, they just make sense and it's it's fun to pull off. But yeah, I mean, the meat and the potatoes of this game are not just prepared correctly. They're fucking delicious. When you're in combat, it doesn't always boil down to spamming your best attack until the enemy is dead, like in Pokemon. That only occurs with low level beasts, which you can avoid because there's no random encounters aka the worst fucking system in RPGs ever created or in video games in general. Combat is genuinely fun and difficult. I died a lot and it's you the trainer who dies like your trainer can die while you still have a team of beasts because you have your own separate uh, HP. I had to arrange 
my I had to rearrange my stickers a lot until I eventually had a, de a team with decent coverage and synergy. And even then I had to rely on healing and revive items. But in the end, it felt really good to come to come away with the team um, for the for like for the finale that I was like super proud of. I felt like I mastered Cassepis and I was thrilled about that. And honestly, Loki attached to my team like 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 you like like that feeling I got when I like the feeling I still get when I play Pokemon. Like I loved my team. I loved my team in Cassepis and yeah, I'm super proud of them. And this game gave me that feeling. <sighs> I think that's everything. I in conclusion, I mean like I loved Cassepis. I fucking loved it. And I know I brought up some complaints I had with the game, and they are valid, believe you me, but not enough at all to take away the amazing experience I had with this game. And this is a bold claim, but fuck it. This is not just the most unique Pokemon-like you'll ever play. It's the best one. It's the best one. I highly recommend picking up this game if you're a fan of Pokemon or just the monster catching team and collecting genre in general. If it, it, just just the battling, just the battling system alone is 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 worth it. And that actually brings me to my next point. Bitten Studio was kind enough to give me a key to give away. Um, so if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Um, I'll be giving a key to a random person who subscribes and either comments, joins my Discord server, or follows me on Twitter, or or all three. So comment, that's one entry. You join my Discord server, that's another entry. You follow me on Twitter, that's a third. So you can get three entries in the raffle and I will be picking a random person in about, mm, let's say a week and I will reach out to them. And yeah, so I hope you guys win. And yeah, thanks again for watching. That's my review of Cassette Beast. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, please do subscribe. Uh, give me a like, leave a comment and buy my merch so I can keep making content. Your support means the world to me. And yeah, I mean, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.